Susana, Susana Williams, thank you for being here. Um, this is Musica y Mezcal. Cheers. Cheers. Well, that's good. <laughs> All right. That's a good tequila. It's very good tequila. <laughs> so we're very happy to have you here with us. Um, my uh, first question would be, I know you are originally from Venezuela. You're from Caracas. Mm -hmm. uh, and you arrived here by the late 90s. Yes. Um, and uh, so before that, you still already had like a very uh, really moving and um, yeah, like an upbeat already life and music yes. uh, back in Venezuela. Yeah. So I would like to know first, uh, how was your startings? In, in music. Okay, um, so thank you for having me. I'm, I'm really grateful you guys invited me to come over. Um, so yes, I came to Canada in 1998, <laughs> and I already had a 10-year career back in Venezuela. And so I my first job as a, a professional musician was at the age of 13. And um, it was... Um, There was a band that used to rehearse every Saturday uh, across the street from the building where I lived. Okay. And so every Saturday I would stand on the balcony and I would just listen to the music and I knew all the songs and all the lyrics wow. to the songs. And um, my mom one day said, uh, you should go downstairs and tell them to let you sing a song. And I'm like, I'm 13 years old. Nobody's going to, you know, nobody's going to pay Take attention me to me or treat me seriously. Yeah. And um, next thing I know, she's walking across the street and she comes back with the drummer of the band. And he said, oh, just come down and just sing a song. And I could feel that it was just like, oh, let's just let the kid do her thing. And mm -hmm. and they asked me which song I wanted to sing. And they were surprised as to which one I had chosen. And I started singing and I worked with them for four years from that day. Wow. And so uh, before you went to like to start singing with them, Mm -hmm. um, you said you knew the songs. Were they playing like original songs or were they playing? Uh, they were covers. They, they were, were covers. covers. Yeah. So yeah. you already like knew them. And then by the time you got there, you were like, I'm going to Yeah, I already sing had it. Song. Yeah. I never planned to go and sing anything. I just enjoyed yeah. seeing how they constructed the music and how they would stop anywhere in the middle of the song. And then all of a sudden they would start in the middle of the song. I just thought it was fascinating. Yeah. Um, but I never learned the songs because I wanted to go sing. I just learned yeah, exactly. them because I thought it was Just the cool. coolest thing, yeah. 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 And yeah, yeah. Um, what did what did you start? Uh, did you start singing first, or what, like was it the first your first? Um, um, yeah, your like how you got near to music was it by singing or was it like by playing an instrument? Yeah, um, it was definitely singing was my my first instrument. Um, I went to a conservatory of music when I was about seven. Okay, um, and that's where I started learning music. So. Mm -hmm. Um, in between that and my experience with this band, I learned how to play guitar. So I had a couple of guitar teachers and I, so I was already developing musically, but I never thought of music as something that I would do for a living. Wow. Okay. Um, I just loved it. I just knew that I loved it. But I think that from the moment that I, I went from, you know, just singing at school or, um, or playing my guitar at home to a rehearsal where I felt at home. Mm -hmm. Like it's something that was so natural to me. That's when I kind of started to understand that this was a path that I could potentially explore. pursue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, I know, I know you play, uh, percussions and you play keys. Um, how did that start to like, how did you start developing those like different skills? Um, well, I'm, I'm mostly self-taught. Like I have, after I learned how to play these instruments, I did study them more formally, mm -hmm. either through private instruction or I also went to um, Capilano University and I took okay. year, um, jazz studies. I didn't finish, but I almost finished. Mm -hmm. um, and I've studied with other people, but I just started to teach myself, especially percussion, because as you know, in Latin America, They're females very important. don't, and, but women don't play percussion yeah. very often. Yeah, that's At true. least when I, when I was growing up, I, I didn't have, you know, female percussion other than Chile, probably. Yeah. It's a whole movement now. Is uh, it really? Actually, yeah. Uh, in Mexico, uh, it started to be like, yeah, like a whole movement. Like women uh, percussionists 
and like we're all just gonna play you know get together and play or either play or dance some of like afro uh like latin rhythms and that's the coolest like they all just get together and they're just like that's the coolest and yeah it's a whole thing now and it's pretty cool uh whenever there's like a women's march like for like international women's day uh and there's any kind of protest like a lot of those girls are like there and just like that so, makes me happy because i yeah. it was completely discouraged that i would try it that i would do it it's like that those instruments are for men like i played the drum set too and no no so i could do it in my bedroom so i would i would borrow the instruments from my bandmates and yeah. i would take them to my to my our apartment and i would just play them there and that's kind of how I learned it. And then when we moved here in 1998, mm-hmm. um, and we were playing shows on Commercial Drive, Ooh. Um, I just started to, you know, bring percussion instruments, and I started to play and sing at the same time. And that's how it kind of started to develop into what's been now 20, 24 years. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's kind of cool. Yeah, I'm happy then. Yeah. Um, I'm happy you didn't give up. Yeah, that, I think I think <laughs> you didn't get discouraged, you know. I think I have been discouraged many times. Okay. I think that any musician that's been in the business for a long time that says that they haven't been discouraged, I don't think that's realistic because mm. it's such a. I mean, we musicians we work with a business first that is not super steady and yeah. stable, right? Like most artists. Right, it has ebbs and flows, and it's like, it's not your nine to five type job, yeah. um, and it also involves a lot of your personal emotions, and it's a very involved craft. Yeah. So I think that we all, if we've been long, like doing this long enough, there are times when you feel discouraged. There are times when you want to give up. I've taken breaks from music for long periods of time, um, but I mean, as I get older, I think it's not so much a break from music as it is a break from how music is constructed and built in our society. Okay. And so, yeah, of course I've, I've been discouraged, but I, I always have to, the need to go back after I've taken a break or after I've rediscovered what exactly is that I'm trying to do. Um, so yeah, no, I, I wouldn't say that, that you haven't been discouraged. No, because so I have. Yes. You, but you haven't stopped playing. No, or- no. Like you, you're discouraged into like uh, pursuing it as like a constant way of to find a like to for it to be a, a way of living. Yeah. And it ends up more like like, OK, so I'll just stop no. right now and then. Well, you know, it's that that is a two two part answer because mm-hmm. I did kind of stop doing my own thing and I was blessed enough that. I was playing with a Latin band that has played the biggest jazz festivals in Vancouver and the Olympics, which is Gomadura. Gomadura, yeah. And so because Gomadura was very active during the time when I kind of retreated from my solo music, Mm -hmm. I was never completely out of the business. Okay. Um, But somebody else was doing the hustling, and I was just showing up and doing the best that I could on stage. Okay. So... There have been times when I've taken a back seat, um, but I, like I said, I've been very lucky that even though I've taken a back seat, I have been able to continue, which mm-hmm. has continued to keep the seat of music and music in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, but maybe if that band wasn't around, maybe, I don't know, the story would have been very different. I was with them for 18 years. Wow. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I saw you played, uh, you were going to play with them uh, in the Philippines. Uh, that's, then- that's Rumba Calzada. Oh, it's Rumba Calzada. I thought yeah. it was with... Go- oh, okay, okay. Gomadura is... I don't... I, they haven't played in a while. Rumba Calzada is also iconic in... They started in, in the 90s as well. Yes, when with Rafael's were, father. Yeah. But I became a member of the band um, a couple of years ago. Okay. So they had another, another singer. Mm-hmm. She was uh, from Cuba. And something came up and she stopped working with them. And I got a call from Rafael who I, I had played with, Rafael, as a percussion. He played percussion for Comadura, so we knew one another. Um, and he asked me if I would do a show. Okay. I said, this was two years ago. I said, sure, I'll do a show. I said, well, I have another show. Sure, I'll do another show. And then I show up for the rehearsal, and we do the rehearsal, and it kind of like what happened when I was 13. He yeah. said, well, we want you to stay. I'm like, you want me to stay? Yeah, we have an album we're going to record, which actually came out 
in February, I think it was. And or late January, maybe? Or late January, yeah. yeah. Like it that. came out this year, the beginning of the year. And and so all of a sudden I am a part of Rumba Calzada and we released an album and and here I am playing again with them on the fifteenth of April and um yeah. Wow. So it's been sort of like um yeah, you've had like the same story, same good story repeat itself. Yeah. Um so that's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's kinda cool. Yeah, yeah it's kinda and cool. And how did you um how did you start in music as like how how did you become curious when you were younger? I know um you started when you were very, very young. Like mm-hmm. you even did a sa- uh, song for your grandmother. I read a a little a yes. thing about that, which was so endearing. When I read yes. that, I was like, I if I if I were ever a musician, I would totally I would have probably done that. And I did like the closest thing to that was like write a letter to my grandfather. Uh and you know, um I did a drawing of my grandmother when I was like very young. Um, so I was like, yeah, I totally relate to that. <laughs> I, I mean, I just, I'm not a musician, of course. So no, but that's a form of art and it's a yeah. form of expressing. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, oh, that's like, it's very sweet. Um, I know, so I know you did that, but then you sort of got into it a little bit, uh, more when you were like about seven. And then the whole thing with, the uh, with the guys in the basement was yeah. when you were like 13, right? So that's when I was, Yes. So is it because of like, do you have family members that are musicians or was it something that you just started to, you discovered that like, oh, I have a voice. And I like was a good the one. only musician in my family. Wow. I was the only musician in my family. Um, like I said, I don't think I set out to be a musician. I think I just became what I was supposed to become because it was my, I think music is the purest form in which I can express exactly how I feel. Okay. Um, And so that, I don't think that becomes clear right away. Like, I don't, I'm not the kind of person that says, oh, I knew exactly in that moment. When I was Yeah, no, looking back, I can, I can think, oh, yeah, that was a turning point in my life. But I don't think you think those things when you are 13 years old <laughs> and, you're, and you're still figuring out who you are. I think I'm still figuring out who I am, yeah. um, which keeps life interesting. But I... I mean, I, I started writing music when I was like seven or six, and my grandmother used to, my father's from Spain, so my, my grandparents lived in Spain and spent periods of time in Venezuela. So the song that I wrote was one of the many times that they were going back oh. to Spain. Mm-hmm. And I remember as a little kid, like feeling very affected by this presence and then the lack of... Like sudden detachment. Yeah, yeah. Like. The lack of presence. So that's when I started playing guitar and writing songs with my guitar um nothing serious and i think it was i was yeah i was 13 when i wrote perdona which is um, one of my favorite songs that i've ever written um can you tell and, me a little bit about what that song is about for people who don't know sure, what sure. perdona means is means yeah so perdona means forgive for- me yeah um and and so this song talks about this person telling somebody else why do i have to be jealous um Why don't? Why can't I understand the way that you are and you behave? Um, maybe it's because I'm very insecure. So very profound lyrics for mm-hmm. a 13 year old. Yeah. Um, and those lyrics came out because I, I fell in love with my best friend at the time, but because I hadn't realized that I was gay at the time, mm-hmm. and being gay was something you didn't even think about because yeah. who? How dare you think about yeah. something like that? Um, it was my way of channeling saying how I truly felt without me having to expose myself that my feelings towards that person were in that song. Okay. And so, and I don't think this person knows that that oh song was God. for her. Wow. Um, so it was, that's why I'm saying like music was the best way for me to really, and has been the best way for me to really express who I am and the things that I feel in a way that can, people can relate And I'm not completely, I'm exposed, but I'm not completely exposed. Yeah. Unless I choose to be exposed. Yeah. Like in this moment where I'm sharing with you this story, I don't think I've actually shared that story before in the way that I'm sharing it right now. I've said, yes, I wrote it when I was 13 years old, but I never said for whom and why. So okay. there you go. So, oh, thank you. I feel very <laughs> You're privileged. Welcome. You're it's, welcome. I'm going to have a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have it with you. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Yeah, then I guess um, it's also like, I feel like that age, um, a lot of people, or I guess most people, as you said, you really don't know who you are. You're still like 
really figuring out like everything around you and everything you feel because everything is just like bigger like if you feel mad you feel like really mad if you feel sad you feel really sad if you're mm -hmm. happy it's like explosive mm -hmm. happiness um and i also remember having like a lot of experiences where i don't know like i would be confused about feeling a certain way about someone and then like feeling really angry about it and then and not being able to express it and i do remember i would start sometimes like you know doodling a little bit on my notebook because i guess that's what would make sense that was to your me. outlet yeah yeah um so yeah like, as you said like it's a different form of art but it i i totally get it it's like well i'm just gonna be safer right to do it in the privacy of your own home yeah. or your bedroom and then share it but you're not fully sharing it because the emotions behind that is what drove your your piece yeah but you're not fully revealing all the aspects of your story totally yeah right exactly so it's, it's intimate but not intimate enough that you are completely exposed I think. yeah yeah because right? yeah yeah exactly yeah it's like wearing exactly. a bathing suit yeah <laughs> you know it's like you're stripping and all of a sudden yeah but the bathing suit's gonna stay on you know? exactly gonna, that's as far as i'm gonna let you see my soul right now right yeah that's uh -huh. a, yeah that's a pretty good analogy <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. um and so uh after you um you came here to to kind of like you had your whole like 10-year career mm -hmm. you collaborated with great great musicians in venezuela as well yeah. um and you had your own thing uh going on people would line up to see you um so i don't know like is, is there a part of you that maybe misses like that i don't know like that small life of yours uh in caracas Or do you feel like, well, yeah, but I'm also like, it's also, I, I cherish that as something that's it passed in the moment. And I am also that's like, a, that's a great question, actually. That's a very insightful question. Thank you for asking that. <laughs> um, if I'm fully honest with myself and since I'm being very honest and vulnerable with you, yeah, I, I do miss the things that I, I was getting from being in Venezuela in in the Venezuelan music industry um the standard of musicians back home was so high so I knew for a fact from experience that if you for you to work you had to be very good there was a, there was a you knew that when you got a job I mean not many people told you how good you were mm -hmm. but when you got the gig you know you were very good Because you knew that the standard of musicians were so high and, and the products were so polished that becoming a part of that was, without the necessity for words, it was always reassuring yeah. and reinforcing. And so, I mean, when we left, um, I mean, the country didn't continue that trajectory, right? Like mm -hmm. a lot of my fellow musicians and people that I work with, like Frank Quintero and Chiara and Those people left. They're in Miami. They're they're no longer back home. So I was not the only person to leave. I was probably one of the first ones to okay. to to exit. Yeah. Because I we left a year that Chavez took power, mm -hmm. and I think people were on a, on a holding pattern to see um, politically what what was going to happen. What was going to happen? Yeah. And um, my my partner at the time, who we got married and we have a child and we're best friends. Um, We knew that things were not necessarily going to be better because mm -hmm. we were still we were starting to feel the stresses of um, of the shifts, and so the work wasn't as abundant as it used to be. Like we could feel it, mm -hmm. um, and so I am I'm happy I came here because I look at Venezuela and I go, wow, I I don't know that I would have ever gone anywhere. Yeah. Um, But at the same time, do I wish that things would have continued and progressively take me to places that I wanted to go as a musician back home? A hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. Am I grateful to be here and I've had the opportunities that I've had here, um, including going to university, going to UBC, getting a degree in psychology and learning a second language and having a child here with all the benefits of being a Canadian? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, but you never gain something without losing something yeah never light is a trade-off all the time 
So, yeah, I miss it, but I'm also grateful. Grateful, right? Yeah. Um, do I wonder what would have happened if I would have stayed even like five years longer? Yeah, sure, but it's no longer the case. So, yeah, and it, yeah, I probably like. Um, I guess it's something that a lot of people might might uh, relate to. Well, especially Latin people, I mm -hmm. think, because uh, you know the whole like context, like political context, and it's all very different. Like even the music is just like um, politically charged. Not always, but like a lot of it is. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's this different kind of like feeling um, because of language and because of like our culture uh in general i just feel like i don't know it's 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 hard to to not think of that kind of music and think of like maybe how like how the music you listen to here is just like very different and it's not that it's worse it's not it's just different it's so different yes it's like a different kind of it's different kind of joy it's different kind of a lot you mm -hmm. know um and uh, yeah i guess like I, i have like a favorite um music in in spanish and it's so different like very very different to whatever i would listen to in english mm -hmm. and th the other day i don't know who i was talking to and i was like if this song were translated into english i think i would just like not listen to it i feel like it doesn't but in spanish it has such a different context and it's like i don't know it's uh it makes you feel in a different way So well, I totally agree. It's it's just that we don't have language without culture. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like language is so embedded in the culture. Exactly. So if I were because we were talking about what if I want to do this interview in Spanish or in English. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think the reason I, I chose English is because in in the English language, I don't know if this is true for you too, but mm -hmm. there is a polished way to say hard things. Yeah. Right? Yeah. In Spanish. I don't think there's a, there are Polish ways to say many things. Yeah. But there is a rawness in Spanish. Yeah. And, uh, and um, it exposes a lot of emotions. Yes. Very quickly. Yeah. And so I can totally understand how that's translated into music too. And how if you were to like, that's one of the reasons why, okay, if I've lived most of my life here, which I have, mm -hmm. and I were to tell you my stories here in Spanish, for me, they wouldn't translate because they don't have the same kind of emotion. Yeah, they're not this. Yeah, they're not the same emotionally charged. I guess exactly because it's they yeah. might be, but there's a way for me to get around telling you things that I would say very differently in Spanish. Yeah, and because I've been here for so long, I don't know how that would translate to you. Yeah, right? yeah. okay. So yeah, it's a bit I of um, and so because I wanted to be as present as I could and I could be as open and honest mm -hmm. as I could, I had to kind of stick to something that is a little bit more familiar, just because. I'd been here for so long. Yeah. Um, and my, my, my wife is from here. And so my life is lived in English at least 98% of the time. And I know, uh, so your wife is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, she is a flamenco dancer, right? She is. Wow. And yes. Yeah. I, I, I did my homework. <laughs> my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, which is, I don't know, now that you said that your grandparents are from, uh, they were from Spain. My dad too. Oh, so okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm first. I mean, well, I'm half Spanish and half Venezuelan. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, and your, I feel like now I can sort of um, understand maybe a little bit more, like when you play, whenever you play at Guild, because like I've seen you play at Guild. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess you try to translate a little bit of flamenco into your into your music because I mean I, I also know like Latin music is a little bit it has a little bit of those rhythms mm -hmm. um but now it just like it makes makes sense it makes sense yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so and you're also the musical director for the right um, yeah yeah okay how's yeah, that experience wow. how how's so we've been a bit inactive since we moved to the Sunshine Coast and I mean COVID also kind of slowed things down but prior to that um We, we toured Newfoundland with okay. flamenco and they've never had in Newfoundland a flamenco group show up. And we were lucky enough. My wife got a grant from uh, Canada Council and we ended up traveling the entire province and performing flamenco. And um, I love flamenco. I have a lot of respect for flamenco and it's taught me a lot of letting go and letting loose because mm -hmm. you kind of have to. Um, 
but I would never consider myself a flamenco musician. Yeah, okay. I, I reserve that for people who are actually from the region and actually uh, this flamenco is so cultural. Yeah. And it's so pure mm -hmm. that I would never claim, oh, I'm a flamenco singer. I'm not. Yeah. I can sing flamenco, but I'm not a flamenco singer. And I, I that's a claim that's huge. And and so I respect that. And for me, it was a good cultural awareness mm -hmm. as to what I feel belongs to me as a as a as a form of expression. Um but working with flamenco was was great. I mean, my wife has, is a great dancer and she's got a huge passion for flamenco, way bigger than mine. And um it was very um it opened a lot of different you know, uh, sites to awareness in terms of art when I started to produce the shows and 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 work with her on making the shows successful. Okay. Um, I think from a from a musical standpoint, it opens a lot of doors and and different angles that I apply to my own shows. Um, but I think the biggest gift for me has been to be able to produce something that is completely different mm -hmm. to anything that I've ever done and ever, anything I ever thought I would ever do. Okay. If that makes any sense. Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess it, um, does your, uh, like any of your families, any of your family, uh, uh, members, like they, I, I imagine they all, they know you're always been like in music, like big time. Uh, yes. did they ever, I'm changing drastically. The subject. That's okay. Um, did they ever, whenever you like stopped, you said you had like a huge gap uh when you were like you felt discouraged mm -hmm. uh did they ever like just sort of try to push you back like you should like you're you were doing so well like playing i don't know i sort of thought about it right now like if your dad were like oh i know like well you say you're not a flamenco um uh singer mm -hmm. but i guess for him it could be like really nice and cool uh to see like her daughter you know sing um music from where he's from, you know? So right. I don't know if it's like, no, like you should go back if it were ever, if it was ever like that, if it was ever like, just mm. don't be discouraged. Like, I know it's rough. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, they, so my parents, I mean, I've been away from, from my parents for so long. I mean, I've seen them mm -hmm. um, and we've spent time together, but we, we, we haven't been super close. Okay. And so I've had to do a lot of my career choices have been self-motivated. Okay. Um, I got a lot of mixed messages when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. They were super supportive when I was doing very well and they were very hard when I wasn't doing so well. So okay. if, you know, I got a job with Kiara, I'm singing for Kiara and, or Frank Quintero and we're going on tour and I'm 17 and, it was like, and they'd be yeah. like, wow, that's amazing. We're so proud of you. And then all of a sudden there's no gigs and I'm doing this crappy gigs here and there and I'm not loving it. And they're like, well, if you were doing something else other than music, maybe that wouldn't be the case. So um, when I moved here and, you know, and my, my dad went back to Spain and my mom, you know, stayed in Venezuela and then went to Spain, I, I kind of didn't share that about me anymore. Yeah. Um, I kind of, yeah, I kind of took, I took control of my artistic decisions because okay. um, I needed something more stable in, in terms of messaging. Yeah. And it was already hard to operate with those Mixed programmed messages, yeah, yeah. messages that I had from before. So I believed for a long time, yeah, maybe when I'm not doing well, it's because music is not. I because I should be doing, be doing something else. Yeah. And all of a sudden I'm doing well. And it was very bipolar, right? It's like, and all of a sudden I'm doing well. And I'm like, oh, this is great. I'm. I should I should definitely yeah. do this. This is my calling. Um, they, they've so to clarify, they've always said to me that they do see my talents and they appreciate them. Mm -hmm. So it's not that they've ever said I'm not good at what I do because they have always said that I'm very good at what I do. Um, and my dad is brought to tears every time I share some piece of music that I wrote or recorded, and um, it's just that they were raised differently. Yeah. Right. So they had different ideas. And I think even today we listen, we hear, we hear artists saying, oh, well, you know, it wasn't until I was successful that people got it. Well, sh people should get it regardless of the fact that you're successful according to society or just doing what you love instead of doing something else. Yeah. Um, so, no, I, I've had to be my own. And I have, I mean, my wife is like 
more supportive than anyone in my life. And so that's the driving force. So it's very important to have somebody like that in your life. Yeah. But when you don't, you kind of have to keep listening to your own internal compass as to where, where am I going with this? Why am I doing what I'm doing? Yeah. Your own voice, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay. Um, and uh, so when you got first here to Canada, mm -hmm. how was your first, like, uh, what did you do? Like, did you, because you already had your 10-year career mm -hmm. uh, back home and then, you know, Tavis gained power and uh, you came here. So was it like, a, I don't know what I'm going to do or was it like, I'm just going to do what I was doing, but I'm just going to like, going to do it here and people are going to listen or... How's no. that experience? Um, so when I moved here, I didn't even speak the language. So, um, yeah, so my ex like, yeah, my ex-husband and I, he was my piano player in my band back home. Okay. And um, we, we tried to make something happen here, but we very quickly found out that it wasn't going to be as easy as like taking it from where we left it off in Venezuela. Mm -hmm. So I think that a lot of the things that I did other than experience were lost in, in, in the pr process of immigrating. And we no, I, I pretty much had to start from the beginning and I had to go back to <clears throat> playing mostly Latin music, which is not what I wanted to do. Okay. Because back home I started with Latin music when I was a teenager But by the time I was 18, until the age of 23, I have my own band and it was rock and pop. Yeah. With elements of Latin music, but it was rock and pop. Mm -hmm. And so I had to do the exact same thing. I had to go back to Latin music drawing board because people wouldn't, would only recognize me as a Latin musician. Yeah. Um, a female Latin musician and, and not, not very long after that, I realized I was gay and I came out. There were so many things about me. That were, were like, so outside of the every, like, I don't think people knew where to put me. And I don't think I knew where to put myself, really. <laughs> um, so I, I, no, I went back. I went back to the beginning and I got very discouraged because mm -hmm. I had worked so hard to, um, to be a part of the music community in Venezuela. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you yeah, know, it was all, it was all kind of scratched up and, I just had to rely on the talents that I had, you know, worked on, like my vocals and mm -hmm. and being a musician. But no, it was pretty much starting from zero. Starting from zero, yeah. And um, so when, like, once you got here and like all that happened, uh, which I imagine was not at all easy. Um, when was the moment when you were like, okay, I'm just gonna stop, uh, you know? feeling this and I'm just going to start hustling somehow or, or was it more like a coincidence? Like, Oh, I suddenly met this person and they sort of like invited me to this thing. And then we started like, I don't know, singing together and it drove like, was it, or was it just like something like amounted like little by little, or was it like, I'm just going to start right now? It was a, no, it was a little, it was a progressive thing. It was a little by little, um, kind of deal. Um, COVID had a huge um, positive impact in my life. Wow. Because um, I had already been working for Raices y Alas and I was doing a lot of flamenco and I was doing still a bit of mu uh, Latin music. And so I was still visible, but I was not, I was still not doing what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And when COVID happened, um, I started to produce more music at home. And I started to write and I started to reach out to people. I had this like urge to express, to express. And it, it, it didn't have a particular, a particular direction. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't looking for something specific. I just felt the need to create content okay. in whichever way I could. And so I started doing that and I started reaching out and I started connecting and I connected with a company in in Australia that I write music for and they 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 place music in film and TV so I started just to kind of investigate ways in which I could work from home because we didn't know how long this was going to yeah. last for and then as I started to do that I started to realize that this was a need of mine to continue to do it and so I've been the most prolific I've been in the last five years 
since I met my wife than I have in my whole career. Wow. Um, just because I did make a mindful decision that, okay, so all of these years that I've been doing this and that I have been cultivating music, going to school, you know, studying music, studying jazz, um, studying percussion and all these things. And okay, I want to bring them all together and kind of create that product that doesn't define me as one or the other, not as Latin, not as Canadian, not as, no, just as But me. But Susana. Yeah, yeah. Just me. Yeah. What do I have to bring to the table, to the conversation in, in the arts? And that's pretty much what I've been doing. Wow. Um, yeah. I guess, okay, so um, I don't know if it's the same story for every musician uh, or for anybody, mm -hmm. but uh, I feel like there were a lot of, um, I don't know, like hiccups and uh, pauses that a lot of people like went through during COVID. Um, so I guess it's good for the rest of us that it was something good for you because we get to now experience you Thank as you. as you and your music Thank as you. as your own. Thank you. Um, and it's really, really, really nice to hear your voice and to hear you Thank play you. all the time. I've uh, like every time I've heard you play at Guild, I, I play. In, I, I play. <laughs> I wish. Um, I I cook in the kitchen, so I'm like back back. Really. There. So I never get to really enjoy like a lot of the the show. Um, uh, I've been working front of house uh, a few months, like yeah, a few months before, from a few months before until now. Um, so I had just no. I think I think all the times you've played, I've, I've been in the kitchen. So it's like <laughs> so, and every not. Um, I mean, it's not like this is a big thing, but like whenever, whenever time uh, I hear like something that's like wow, I I just I have to poke my head out, even though it's busy. And you've always done that, um, oh gosh, like for me. You. So it's like I like the other day I talked to Frey and I was like, she sings amazing and she plays Thank really you. really amazing. And it's like really, really nice to hear your voice you. and really nice to hear your music. Thank you so um, much. I love Guilt. It's so cool. Yeah, Guilt it's a really is, cool venue. And you know what? They really have been the one venue that has supported mu like music, yeah. good live music Yeah, in town. Yeah. Like I have such respect for, for those guys and for Paul Clark. Yeah. Um, I feel honored every time I, I'm on that stage whether with my, with my Latin jazz band, which has performed there, mm -hmm. or my solo show, or with Deep Cuts. I play percussion for oh, Deep yeah, Cuts. Oh, yeah, I saw, yeah, I saw you. I saw and you. so, to me, that venue is special. And I was actually talking to Patrick Gavigan when we played there on Friday, last Friday, and we were both saying, you know you're somebody when you, when you play at Guilt. You know you, you, you're making noise in the Vancouver music community, when you're invited to play this venue. Yeah. Yeah. Like really, you know that, right? Yeah. Like it's, it's just the quality of musicians. Yeah. Anybody who is somebody, and it sounds horrible. It's not that music, people that are not playing there are not somebody, but there is a certain level of recognition that is a part of being a, a part of the guilt and co community. Yeah. Totally. That is very special. So I feel very honored to be a part of that group. Well, you belong um, there. Thank you. Yeah, you I, I love it. I really love it. And I feel, I don't feel entitlement at all. Every time I play there, I just feel honored. And yeah, I just think the vibe there is the right vibe for, for, for musicians. Music. Yeah. It's really, it's like really wonderful to see on stage on Guild. Thank you. At Guild. So it's, um, Coming yeah. back in June um, again. Yeah. And you yeah. were, well, very recently you were two weeks ago and then yeah. you were at Guild again, like. Uh, just month last before. week yes oh, yeah and then yeah. last week you were with deep cuts yeah yeah so yeah it's always a yeah. pleasure having you thank you it's always, oh, it's I, great. Mean, I mean you guys are amazing venue, right but <laughs> no you guys are amazing i think all the staff at hilton co is absolutely incredible there's something that happens there i don't know what it is but you guys have some something going on that is super inspiring every time we walk in there we feel like we're amongst family It's like, yeah, we're just going to rock this night. Everybody's yeah. just ready to rock the night. Yeah. Um, from, you know, the servers to the kitchen to the bar to everyone, the musicians were all like, okay, we're ready for this. We're ready because we all know we're going to have a good time. It's a really special place. Yeah. 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 For special people. Oh. We have, yeah. So it's cool. Um, so I also wanted to ask you, um, you had, uh, you have... Released, you released an album in 2004, mm -hmm. then you released an album 
2020 mm -hmm. and then 2021. Yes. Right. Uh, but you had like that big gap, which mm -hmm. is when you told me you had like these small things sort of amounting up until like mm -hmm. you really got into COVID help, helped you to like really push get you my, into get my act together. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, and so now what, uh, do you have, like, I know you also produced and, uh, uh, a short film, uh, I you did. Direct, yeah. Dreaming. So you're, yeah. Dreaming, mm -hmm. uh, it's a seven minute and a half or so, right? Yeah. Short film. That's um, my daughter. If you watched it, that's my kid. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that's my daughter. Wow. Yeah. That's so cool. That's so cool to have something like with your mom and wow. That's so cool. Yeah. That scene in the shower. Crazy for me to see her doing that as I mean, a mom. <laughs> I remember stopping and saying, are you okay? And she's like, mom, I'm an actress. <laughs> This is what I do. And I'm like, okay, 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 I got it. Do I ask you about things you do when you're on stage, when you're playing music? I don't, mom. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, no, she's, yeah. I was, I, and that was also during COVID. Oh, okay. I was also, it was, COVID was a crazy time for me of just whatever I didn't do before that, whatever initiatives I didn't take, It, it just, was like, it just kind of funneled into a two year period where I just couldn't stop producing things. Wow. That's and people amazing. were asking me, how are you producing all this stuff? And I was like, I don't know. It was, it was It's there happening. and it needed to come out and it's still coming out. Like in, like I'm dumping stuff just it's coming out and in ideas and I'm recording a new album in August. Okay. So I'm in pre-production. So I'm, I'm in the process of writing Right now, I'm just writing ideas for lyrics, like what I want, what do I want to talk about? What do I want to say? Um, what are the messages that I want to actually mm -hmm. share with people? Um, kind of tired of talking about love and yeah. and heartbreak. I think I'm done with that for a long time. Um, and I want to now to take a more political approach okay. and a more social justice approach. Um, when they killed George Floyd, I wrote a song and produced a song with Crystal De Santos and wow. SD Elements, and um, I. That's what music is supposed to do. You were talking about Latin American music having these messages yeah. that are impactful. I think that we need that in English as well. Yeah, and it's going to be a, a, a bilingual um, album, by the way. It'll be Spanish and English. No. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, is it you as uh, like solo going solo? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. Um, and then you just, uh, you said you just released uh, an album on, in January, we said January, yeah, uh, with... Um, Alex Flock. Uh, oh, well, you had, that was 2020, I released a no? Couple of, no, Alex Flock and I released a couple of singles at the beginning of this year, my first oh, release okay. for the year. Um, Rumba Calzada released the album in January. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but as, but, and was it you singing already? In the yes, in this one, right? Yeah, yeah I did. Okay. I recorded the last. Uh, it was me, Danai Sinclair, who was the previous singer, mm -hmm. and Don Pemberton. Okay, did one of the tracks too. So it was okay. it was a pretty cool experience to be able to be a part of like that group of musicians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet. Yeah, it's super <laughs> neat. I mean, the more the merrier for me. I, I will never just sit in a box of something or the other. I think a part of Part of being a part of the community is being able to share your gifts and your talents in whatever capacity they're mm -hmm. useful. So yeah, I agree. Yeah. It's um, sharing is caring, I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's like if you have a talent or many talents uh, as yourself, it's like, um, well, it's nice for people that maybe don't have that talent to be able to appreciate as much as we can. Um, I guess that's how you can enjoy like music. Uh, I don't, I really don't know how to maybe put this into words, but, um, like there are certain, there is certain music and certain singers and certain, uh, bands that, um, I mean, when they, whenever they do a song that I like, whenever I speak about that song that I like, it's, it holds a, you know, a, a, it's very endearing because, To me because of blah 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 and it's something different for somebody else mm -hmm. um and i feel that i feel that because it's different for that somebody else it's because it's the different talents that were you know um used in different ways mm -hmm. uh, and so that 
maybe that person maybe appreciates this specific part of that song and mm-hmm. I appreciate more of the lyrics or I appreciate more of the guitar or um, the fact that there's like certain rhythms or I don't know. Um, so it's good that you're using all of your talents. I think there is always a symbiotic relationship between the audience and the artist. Yeah. Because there wouldn't be art if there wasn't an audience for it. Yeah. So whenever somebody says, well, I don't have the talents, but well, but you have the appreciation for mm-hmm. what I'm presenting. Doing, yeah. And so I wouldn't be able to do that if the, there was somebody like yourself or mm-hmm. someone else who someone else who relates to the to the lyrics or the melody or whatever it is that I'm trying to communicate. Mm-hmm. Um, we need people who want to listen to what we have to say. <laughs> Right, like we wouldn't be doing what we love if that wasn't the need for that. I think we all want to be seen. Yeah. Right, and the way we come across trying to do that is different depending on how the the artist. But we're all trying to be seen. You know, we are all trying to be seen, and I, as a musician, I feel grateful when somebody says, "Oh, I, I love what you were doing," because nobody's going to love what you do, but those who love what you do. Okay, so you're you are speaking to them, and that's what we're trying to do. So that's just reaffirming that that channel is still open and it's still happening between yeah. myself and the, and the audience, um, or any musician that comes and sees us and a- appreciates what we're bringing to the table, right? Because it's a conversation, mm-hmm. right? Like it's like even though if I listen to a song of yours and I'm like I'm here at home. Um, well, you're not, you're not going to be there, but I, but you are going to be there because I'm listening to you and mm-hmm. I'm ha- like, we're having a conversation in some way. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, and it means something so, yeah. cause it makes me feel a certain way. And I feel like, I don't know, happy or, or, um, I don't know how to describe that feeling, but like, like yeah, it hearing, becomes a part of your experience. Yeah. yeah. Like and, you feel, and, you feel, you feel seen. Yeah. And what a and as what well. a privilege as a musician to become a part of somebody else's experience. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, guess. I think that that forgetting that is the big mistake. Yeah. Right. I I feel honored when somebody says, "Oh, I listened to that and that brought me to tears." Um, or having somebody at a show, which happened to me two weeks ago, and somebody just after I finished, she just started bawling. So when you have the power to with your art, with what you love, to touch someone to have an experience that's what we're having in this in this world it's just a bunch of experiences Experiences, there's nothing else right and then the stories we tell about the experiences yeah but in reality i mean right now this is an experience Mm -hmm. so being a part of somebody else's experience is just a cool experience on its own (laughs) right um and i think that's the beauty of music is that through the the music that we create we become a part of somebody else's experience and then it becomes a shared experience. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Cause you think maybe I'm the only one living this. And then once you share it and then you're like, Oh, other people have also felt that way. And it's like, well, that makes sense. Like, mm-hmm. But it makes you feel not alone. Exactly. In some way, or it may so. evoke different feelings and experiences for yeah, people. That's true. And then you have a broader conversation. <laughs> right. And it's still a part of the experience. Yeah. So, I think that's one of the reasons why music is just music and is a venue. Um, it's a vessel through which we're able to communicate, explore and communicate and, and safely express mm-hmm. things that are happening to us. It's always about the artist. Yeah. Right. Like we're always putting out their stuff that's happening for us. And if we're not, then we're not serving the art. We're, you know, that's why popular music sometimes is a bit tricky, right? Because mm-hmm. are you doing because you love it or you're doing it because somebody told you that's what you should do? Yeah. And that's how you should dress and that you, you should sound like this. I, I'm at a point where I just want to sound like me. I want to look like me. I want to do me. Mm-hmm. And those people I connect with, those are my people. Those are the people that, and those people that I don't, they're going to find somebody they connect with. And that's awesome. Yeah. It's just not it's me. It's just as good, but it's just but, as good. Yeah. Right. It's just as good. Um, because as long as I keep having conversations like this one with you, uh, I mean, music provided this opportunity, right? Yeah. So if, if music continues to do that for me, then I know I'm doing the right thing. The moment that that stops and I know it's time for me to shift. 
Hopefully that doesn't happen. <laughs> not, very, not, not anytime soon. I'm hoping yeah. not. No, I'm not taking another huge break like the one I took. I can tell you that. Okay. I'm, I'm yeah. glad to hear that. You yeah. mentioned you were writing right now. So, yes. um, and you didn't really want to write about like the whole love um, thing. No. So what kind of experiences are you looking to, to write about? Or are you still like brainstorming right now through them? I'm still brainstorming. Like um, we lost a member of the music community today. So I've been thinking a lot about that. I'm so sorry. And we don't know exactly what happened. Thank you. Um, but she was very important in the music community, in the classical music community. And it those that makes me want to write. Makes me want to write about how brief our time on earth is and the impact of her work. So I can say her name because it's been released. is Jocelyn Marlock. And she is a Juno Award winner, and um, we were actually collaborating during COVID. And so finding out that somebody is here and all of a sudden they're not here anymore mm -hmm. and they were trying to do what, I, what I'm trying to do puts things into perspective and makes me want to write about that, you know, about the human experience and about the pain that, I mean, her partner is the man that I worked with, Gomadura, for 18 years. So those are... Those are the stories that I feel I'm, I'm ready to tell, mm -hmm. right? Uh, about human connection and about the meaning of human connection and in ways that people can relate, mm -hmm. ob obviously, just for the sake of being able to be Connect. consumable. Yeah, yeah, like people can actually understand where I'm coming from. Um, but I do think that that's, I think this album is going to be more existential than anything else. Just about what it is, what it is to be a human, and to try and belong and be here, and 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 leave a mark, mm -hmm. right? Um, thinking about Jocelyn, I mean, the huge mark she's left. She was a teacher at UBC, and her students and her colleagues, and and her music would live would live forever, right? Yeah, um, she'll always live through her music, and so those are the things that I want to talk about, and I. I don't know what that's going to look like or what that's going to sound like, but that's the exploration that takes place before for, getting yeah. into the studio. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I'm looking forward to listening yeah. to that. So you're releasing this for uh, this year or um, it'll be before the end of the year. Okay. I don't know exactly when, but at the latest by December. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there's still a little bit. You still have, yeah, there's still time. There's still yeah, time. yeah. There's still some work to do. So. <laughs> yeah, it's very um, early stages. So, and do you have uh, more plans about um, writing music for television? And I, um, I do that all the time. Okay, yeah. I submit sets to Melody Australia at least two or three times a year. So, okay, so I'm yeah, always right. composing music. I'm always writing music. Um, it's part of my mental health um, ritual. Is that I. I get to do this as a part of my healing process. Um, so, yeah, that's definitely something that is always ongoing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. You, you're a very busy woman then. I like, try to very, be. very busy. <laughs> <laughs> I try to be. I'm taking a step back a little bit. I, last year I did too many shows, and I don't think that's going to be the case this year. And any It festivals? Uh, maybe. There is a bunch coming up. Um I was invited to do the Langley Jazz Festival. Okay. Um, that's in July. I was invited to do the um, Music in the Landing, which is another summer festival that happens on the Sunshine Coast. Mm -hmm. These two are with my Latin jazz band. Okay. The Gabriola Jazz Festival we're doing with uh, Rumba Calzada. Um, oh, so there's a, yeah, you're there's a bunch a few, of stuff yeah. coming up. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff coming up. Okay, so we're going to see you definitely, yeah, not, definitely. not just a girl, but like, We're going to see you in the sun. All over the place. Yeah. yeah. All and, over and guilt in June. I'll be in oh, guilt in oh, June. Oh, and you, yeah. So yeah, and yeah, I also, yeah. I also wanted to, um, <laughs> what you talked about uh, earlier off camera, um, that sometimes it was like really hard for you to come, like you would have to like oh, improvise a way to Coast. come. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're, yeah. you're, you're based in Sunshine Coast. Uh, then you have shows here all over Vancouver. Yes. Uh, very often, like. Yeah, I don't so, know, like maybe three times a month or uh, maybe at more? least. Yeah, yeah. at least. Um, we're lucky that my father-in-law has an apartment here mm -hmm. and he lives in Newfoundland. So I, I do have a place to crash most of the time. Okay. Um, 
But yeah, I do a lot of commuting, a lot. And sometimes it, you know, only once I've, I haven't made it to a show and it was a jazz festival. So I was very oh. upset. Um, but yeah, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. BC Ferry is not very reliable. <laughs> it's just not. So I've taken float planes. I've taken water taxis. It's like I'm I'm leaving Cuba to go to Miami. It's just not right. <laughs> Because uh, needs to do something. Oh, they need to get their, yeah, they need to get their game on. Especially when I'm coming here for work. Yeah. And just like me, hundreds and you're, of people. Yeah, like you're, you're definitely, people. you're probably not, or yeah, most definitely not Absolutely the only one. Absolutely not the so, only one. I think there's like 700 to 800 people that commute yeah. every day from the Sunshine Coast. So yeah. it, is an, it is an essential service. And sometimes I don't think it's treated like an like essential is, service. But yeah. it is, right? It's like the buses. If the buses don't run, how do people get to work? Yeah. Or medical appointments or whatever. So yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a challenge, but it's also a place where I've been able to create a lot because it's so, um, so beautiful and it's so peaceful and it's so quiet. Um, that that's a trade off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you ever written anything, um, like in the, uh, on the ferry in, on the ferry? Yeah. Like, no. or, or during like any kind of like transit, like from there to here? No, I like, have oh. a bad habit of being on my phone when I'm on the ferry. I'm going to admit it, <laughs> which I want to change. But no, I need, for me to write music, I need to be, um, I need a mood. I, need, I create a mood in my studio with okay. like very dim lights and I have a candle going and it sounds very cliche, but it's actually true. Like but, I kind of need that feeling of, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I mean, I'm just going to, sometimes if I have ideas on the ferry or commuting, I'll record them on my phone. Okay. And then I'll bring them to the studio. Yeah, I was going to ask you, like, do you have, like, do you still have, you know, when you're walking down the street or whatever, and you're like, this rhythm Things just come came, up. And yeah. you're just like, how do I, so you yeah. record, like, do you do a voice note a to voice yourself? Note to my, yeah. And then you do like And the I whole, put the note, like, if it's, oh, this is a guitar riff or, um, or this is just a melody or, for, and I, the date's there. And I just, and then if you look at my phone, I have hundreds of those. And then you and just develop a, them. And then not all of them. No, not all of them. <laughs> like sometimes I go back and I go, oh, no, that's just terrible. <laughs> or I go back and I go, oh, okay, that could actually be something. So, okay. Um, so no, some of, a lot of them have like been discarded, but a lot of them have also like made it through. Some of them have made it. More are the ones that have been discarded than the ones that have made it. <laughs> well, I guess that's also like part of uh, any process. Yeah. Um, Haven't you written something and all of a sudden you go, I like, think this is good. And then you go back and you go. What did no, I, what was I really. thinking? Yeah. 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 Maybe it was the, the yeah, tequila. Like it was probably, <laughs> like, <laughs> what kind of a tequila did I Yeah, do? I don't know. What, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. could happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and do you have, uh, like, after that, how's the process? Like, once you choose, like, oh, this one's good, you're you're in your studio, you have your mood, like, the, you're in the zone. It's um, mostly my guitar. Okay. That's your first, like, That's the my first, first instrument, instrument that I use for writing music. It, to me, is the most intimate beautifully sounding instrument mm -hmm. to create something. Um, and a lot of the times, even though I have a full on studio um, at home, I'll, a lot of the times I just record it on the phone because I don't want the complexity of like the cable and yeah. the, it didn't you know, sound and, right. Yeah. Like I don't want to be thinking about anything that has to come Technical. out perfect. Yeah. I just want to get the idea out. And then once the idea is out, then I'll, I'll start to translate it into you know, um, a demo is the first thing I would do. So kind of like another version of what I already did, but a little bit more polished mm -hmm. that gives me then uh, a part, that process is a little bit less thought out. It's mm -hmm. more felt. And so when I have the structure, you know, whether it's verse, chorus, bridge, whatever it is that I decided to do or that came out, once that structure is there and I like it enough to work on it, Then I start putting it in my in my DAW in my recording um, okay. program. And do you have demos that you're like, oh, now that I already made it a demo, I don't many. like it. Like many of like, them, <laughs> many of them. <laughs> you're like, oh, that didn't age well, or a like, lot. oh, that now I wrote this mm -hmm. 10 years ago, and now it makes a lot more sense, yeah. like the other way around. A lot. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Yeah. There's a lot of things that that was a very good uh, observation. A lot of things age. Yeah. A lot of ideas are old, even though it's like, well, it's just a melody and lyrics. But I listen to them and I go like, that's mm. old. It just yeah. doesn't energetically just doesn't resonate with me anymore. So yeah, for sure. Sometimes I go back and I go, 
Ooh, that's terrible. Like, why no? <laughs> um, why did or, that make sense? Yeah, well, or I make... go, oh, that's actually kind of cool. Or, okay. per, or, or just that little piece from that song is kind of cool. And, and the then rest you use... doesn't really work. You're like, no, never mind. Mm -hmm. 100%. Wow. And have you ever, like, listened to your own lyrics back and be like, oh, I remember what I was thinking in that moment, but I, like, now I feel differently about that. Like, I remember, like, the closest thing to, uh, for me... Uh, to that would be um, I would try to write down my dreams. So I would wake up and just like mm -hmm. it, whatever I would remember about my dream and just write it down, write it down, write it down. So one day I remember uh, I wrote, I ha it was not one day actually. It was like, I don't know, like a month. And I wrote like probably like two, three weeks worth of like just waking up and just writing like three, four lines. Mm -hmm. But then I, I, I didn't write it actually like this or on, the, on the laptop. And then one month later, Uh, my my laptop got like screwed, uh, so I couldn't go. I couldn't access any of it until like four or five years later. And I read like all of my when I was able to get back to it and like read all of my dreaming log mm -hmm. thing. Um, I was like, wow! I remember I had that dream, and I would remember that dream like now, and maybe talk to you about it. But because I wrote this word, I remember I felt this, like exactly this. Oh, and I yeah. would sort of feel it like all over again. Back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it would sort of um, gain like a different, um, I don't know, like a different meaning because it was like a lot of time later, like years or. Um, so I don't know if that would be like maybe something that happens to you. Like, oh, I wrote this when I was, I don't know, like 30 years and then I wrote this and then. I sort of changed it two years later. And then now that I totally forgot about it and years later I read it, I'm like, wow, I totally remember that feeling. And well, with my lyrics, so my process, I would say 95% of the times when I'm writing lyric, it comes through with the melody already. Okay. Altogether. It's like, like a lot of people go and they write the lyrics And, and then they put music to the lyrics. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm writing, it all comes at once. Wow. And there is, in that process, when I actually connect with the song and it starts to come out, I don't think about it. Okay. Okay? So, for example, that song that I, I wrote with Alex um, that summer. Mm -hmm. That summer is, about, is the story about this couple who had a summer fling mm -hmm. and... And how they felt emotionally and attracted to one another and how they knew it wasn't going to last, but they were going to make it last in the moment that they had it. Mm -hmm. I've never had an experience like that in my life, <laughs> ever. When Alex sent me the, the chord progression in the, in the riff, that's what came out. Wow. So, so would, I, would I change it? No, because that's, <laughs> that's the story that the music that he sent me evoked. Yeah, And it came exactly like that. And when it comes like that, which is, like I said, 95% of the time, it just comes like that. There isn't thought that goes into it. And that's the best music that I've ever written is the music that just comes out without thought. I think every time we let thought take over, we're screwed. <laughs> right? We start to overanalyze. Like, is that word okay? Does that go okay there? It's like, no, no, no. If it comes, let it come. Yeah. So I try not to stop it. I try to let it. And so I might go back and think, wow. It's like children. Like you have your children, your songs are your children. Yeah. And you go, yeah, that, that one stayed at five years old. And, but you still love them because they're their children and they, they're at different stages in, their, in your life. And they're a reflection of that stage in your life. So I've learned to honor that that's the, the, that's that's the a, expression yeah. that you had in that moment in time. Mm -hmm. And so I think I'm more judgmental of the production. I actually am. I'm like, oh, shoot. I... Mm, I wish I had done something different stylistically with that song. For sure, that happens a lot. But in terms of lyrics and in terms of the emotion of the lyric, you no, because be. it's just like taking a picture. Yeah, okay. Right, you took a picture. That's just a picture, right? Wow. And when you listen to it, you'll have emotions that remind you of that time. Yeah. But you also accept that that time no longer belongs to them now. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, there are songs like I Belong Here, which I did with a... A uh, German rock band called ER. 
I wow. went to Germany last year to do a show with them. It was amazing. I saw that. I just, I didn't, I was going yeah. to ask about that. I was like, what were you doing in Germany? Yeah. So I, 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 I collaborated with this band and they sent me this music and I wrote lyrics and melody to it. And it's called, I belong here. I would never change a single thing about that lyric. And I don't think it'll ever be old. Yeah. Right. Um, so in the same with, I wrote two. That one in Perfect Storm with them. And they're, bo they're both very existential. So I wouldn't change them. I don't think I'm going to feel different about those questions in life. You know, Anytime 10 soon, years yeah. from now, if I'm lucky to be here, right? So I, I respect that that's the creative process. I think stylistically, I would probably approach things differently looking back, if I look back. But in terms of like what I wrote and how it came out, no, it's, it's, it came out the way it was supposed to come out. Okay. And I think honoring that is part of honoring the work that you've done You're and own, not yeah. expecting to be somebody you weren't in that moment. Okay. Right? Wow, yeah, that's a good a good way of uh, looking at it. Like, yeah, you you respect yourself the process, like, at that yeah. time uh, and what you were going through and, like, the, that experience you had. Mm -hmm. um, and you just, you know, accept it and acknowledge it. And yeah. I produced Perdona in 2004 with my first album. Okay. And I listened to it and I go, I love the song, but I don't like what I did with it. Okay. So I redid it in 2020 Ooh. with some of the best musicians I've ever known. And I'm like, I, I want to do it again. I don't think many songs are going to have that journey. That song is so important to me that I wanted to make sure that the lasting impression of that song was a little closer to how I felt it. Yeah. And so I did do that, but I didn't change the lyrics. I didn't change any, I, the melody is exactly the same. Okay. I just changed how I interpret it, but it's the same Perdona as it was almost 20 years ago. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. So it's kind of cool to see yeah. how they, they do evolve when you play music live and you play your songs live, they evolve, they change. Yeah. But the essence of the song will always remain the same. Yeah. So, wow. That's pretty cool. That's yeah. pretty, pretty cool. I don't need <laughs> <laughs> so um uh i don't know if there's something else you would like to talk about uh about your you know your experience as a musician um if there's any well you know we're you're gonna release a new album uh if there's something else you would like to i don't know let people know no, uh I, for what new projects we're gonna hear from you this year or next year maybe um Well, first of all, I'm super grateful you guys had me. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, thank you for amazing questions, by the way. I'm used to <laughs> doing interviews and I go, really, is that what you're interested in? Mm. <laughs> I have so much more to say. Um, so thank you. Um, no, I mean, the, I think my next album is the biggest project that I have in the horizon. Um, we might be going to Manila with, um, with oh. Rumba Calzada okay. very soon, which would be amazing. Um, No, I think my album is going to be my my main um, goal this year. Um, I have a lot of musicians, a lot of Guild and Co. musicians are going to be recording this album. Uh, Jen Lewin, Kyle Radomski, Alex Flock, um, Jeff Gammon, they're all with me on, on Deep Cuts, in Deep Cuts. Um, and that's super cool. I mean, I love those guys so much. They inspire me every single day. And... I just continue to see where this journey takes me. I'm trying to not be very strict as to what the path is supposed to look like mm. because I've learned that it never ends up being the way that you were attached to. Mm -hmm. But if you're kind of more open, or if I allow myself to be more, more open to how things evolve naturally, then... I'm not so disappointed when I had a preconceived notion of how things should be and they weren't. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's more like, I know I want to do this album. I know kind of like the vibe that I want for this album, but I'm super open to whatever comes. And so I think that that happened, that's probably going to be the way that everything else is going to develop for me. Like I'll, I'll continue more to be curious, and, more yeah. organic as to what's calling me, what's getting my attention, And why, why do I want to do it in the first place? Mm -hmm. And then I let that dictate my next steps as opposed to a five-year plan, right? I've been doing this for so long that I know well enough that five-year plans a lot of the times don't work. 
I guess it makes sense to a little bit to what you said, like not put thought into it, just more like just feel it. Yeah. Yeah. Just feel it. I mean, um, I'm going to keep, you know, getting gigs and playing shows and, um, and creating and writing music. I want to, I've produced a couple of artists on the coast. Um, and I enjoy doing that. So I'm, I'm, I foresee myself doing more of that in the near future. Um, I have a couple of meetings this week about that and, but yeah, just finding ways to express and ways to connect is what I'm, I'm about. And that's where I'm at in my life right now. Okay. Well, yeah. we're, I guess we're all looking forward to, to listening to you, um, you. to seeing you, Thank um, you. to really enjoy your music and keep enjoying your music to whatever, um, you put your feet in, Thank you. uh, from now on, well, from before as well, but you know, Thanks. from now on, moving forward. um, yeah, moving forward. So mm. it was really, really, really nice to have you here. It was really nice talking Thank to you. you. Um, it's such a pleasure Thank you um, to, to, you know, have a conversation with you. Um, and I guess if you have any social media you want to uh, maybe drop or uh, let know any of our audience members. Yeah, um, so Susanna Williams Music and... Mm -hmm. Susana is spelled S-U-S-A-N-A, -S -A, Williams, just Williams, mm -hmm. two L's, and music. Those are my handles for um, both Facebook and Instagram, um, if anyone's interested. And um, I post all of my shows and, and all my projects there so that if somebody is interested, then there it is. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So cheers for... Well, cheers. Yeah. Now, now oh, to the well, beer. The, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cheers. cheers. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here.